Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Aslanik of Pakistan. Today we are going to go on to a very interesting journey. And this journey is now going to transcend uh, the standards that we've been talking about, uh, the different frameworks that we've been talking about, the different schools of thought, and uh, the different contextualization and textualization of corporate governance. Uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. And that topic is called whistleblowing. Now, whistleblowing is not blowing the whistle. It's not about CT Bajana. It is about being the voice in your organization. It is about raising the voice in your organization. If you do recall, in our earlier sessions, we talked about voicelessness. And in that voicelessness, we talked about two different types of voicelessness. One, having a voice and not being heard. And second, being unable to even express your genuine concerns and your genuine observations and the uh, corruption or the inconsistencies which are taking place in any institution, in any society, in any community or in any nation. So again, ladies and gentlemen, whistleblowing is the uh, very opposite of voicelessness. It gives you a voice. It enables you to make noise. It enables you to be heard and it enables you to get justice and to ensure that your institution, your community, your society, your nation, humanity tends to flourish in the positive values of honesty, integrity, truth and accountability. So this is very, very important. Now, when we talk about whistleblowing, we can say that whistleblowing has been a part of humanity since time immemorial. But it was always structured. It was always fluttered. It was always desegmented. It was always unframed. It was always indefined. Now, all of these things were there, but there was no mechanism. There was no system. There was no law. There was no framework for people to express themselves. And what would happen is that up till the 20th century, what we see is, is that the, the, the major stakeholder or the major shareholder or the top management would always tend to subjugate their employees. And based upon that, they would, uh, through force, uh, through coercion, uh, through inappropriate practices, uh, they would tend to uh, snub those people who would raise concern about irregularities, corruption, and also uh, inappropriate practices within a particular institution or organization. Now, whistleblowing, um, even though, like I mentioned to you, has been there for many millennia. However, uh, in its, its, its proper form, what we can see is, is that we see it uh, come into the arena of the corporate world through the 1989 uh, Whistleblower Protection Act uh, of the US Congress. Now, what we see is that for the first time, the whistleblowers were acknowledged and they were given protection uh, from any retribution or retaliation. And they were basically protected from those very powerful interests who uh, would, in other cases, make their lives miserable. So just like the very famous witness protection program of the US, which later on was adopted by many countries around the world, the whistleblowers were also given this protection that if you blow the whistle, then you would not have to bear the brunt of retribution or of retaliation or of revenge. And that basically was a sea change. And that sea change enabled many employees across the globe to raise their voice. And that also led to the closure of some very large companies such as Enron, such as WorldCom. All of these companies were basically toppled because their irregularities were highlighted by their employees. So uh, that is what is extremely important. Now, uh, why whistleblowing? Now, when we look at whistleblowing mechanisms, they save corporations from possible failures. Uh, whistleblowing protects the sustainability of the organization, which is key for all of the stakeholders. So that was what I was basically talking about. Whistleblowing ensures early detection of the corrupt practices in the company. Whistleblowing enhances the confidence in the stakeholders. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that by whistleblowing, uh, rather than having a big disaster later on, uh, you can preempt a disaster. Uh, you can inform the authorities that this is happening within the organization and then they can be taken accounted for 
through the let's say the securities exchange commission of pakistan and also in pakistan through nab the national accountability bureau there is also whistle blowing clause over there and again also by the federal investigation agency uh, they can also play their own role the anti corruption establishment can play their own role uh, the psc can play their own role so there are different uh, regulatory and accountability organizations who can play their own role once the whistle is blowing even in a country like pakistan so that basically would ensure that rather than uh, the the uh, the organization uh, being uh, sucked dry through the termites eating it hollow that can be saved and the organization uh, would face uh, you can say a brief period of lull a brief period of difficulties but would be able to rise again now uh, this uh, in turn tends to uh, raise the confidence of stakeholders and shareholders and can also increase uh, the credibility and goodwill of the organization uh, what we see is that uh, early warning over unethical practices prevailing in the company which can cause failure for the company so again uh, we are looking at uh different things which are taking place and they should be informed well in time before the consequences are so great that the company basically collapses due to its benefit and utmost importance many countries like the uk and us have made policies to enhance whistle blowing mechanism so uh, just like i was mentioning the 1989 act and then uh, later on uh, different laws and acts were uh, basically promulgated by european countries and then even by many asian countries and even by countries uh, developing countries like pakistan Uh, the us and uk have sound economic uh, dominance in the world due to cooperation uh, operating in the countries proactive laws related to whistle blowing are critical so again this boosts uh, shareholder and stakeholder confidence and then tends to uh, reinforce augment and strengthen the economy of any country uh, the past disclosures of corruption in corporate entities came into public attention only through whistle blowing mechanisms and we have seen one very big example of Sharon Watkins who was one of the few people within Enron who voiced the concern 5 months before it collapsed so if people had heard uh, had heard Sharon Watkins on time then maybe we would not have seen this 56 billion dollar debacle which basically uh, nearly wiped out people uh, from the stock market because uh, it had so many rep repercussions but uh, again at least uh, there was this whistle blowing attempt now uh, we also see another very important example of Cynthia Cooper who was the internal auditor and her subordinates investigated the unusual accounting entries in the WorldCom's wireless division in early 2002 and raised the whistle and therefore uh, were able to ensure that it did not end up in a major uh, multi multi billion uh, loss so that again uh, is the importance now the media also has taken advantage of whistle blowing because through whistle blowing the media basically can get uh, very confidential reports and also uh, can have a look into Uh, different corporations and therefore uh, they can play their role uh, as information disseminator in a much better way and again it's very unfortunate that corruption uh, is a universal phenomena and it is affecting uh, all the countries and it's becoming very difficult to combat and investigate and, and then counter corruption as a whole because uh, of the lure and of the dazzle uh, of uh, corruption benefits but again it's extremely important uh that just like uh, i mentioned earlier the global integrity education program uh, and the education uh for justice program of the united nations office for drugs and crimes is now spreading across the world and uh, their other initiative of uh, having uh, anti corruption education symposiums on a global level and then trying to bring countries into the ambit and going up to the students not only the university students but the but the school students so that those values are inculcated within them and they are the, given the confidence to speak up that is extremely important and uh, all of this is taking place so on one side we see corruption uh, gaining a lot of uh, impetus but on the other side anti corruption also are coming out uh, with long term sustainable uh, policies and frameworks uh, and uh, mechanisms to ensure that this menace of corruption can be uh, tackled in a much better way uh, the united nations being the biggest organization just like i was mentioning also uh, is very much against corruption and has many initiatives uh, whereby uh, whistle blowing uh, mechanism is being uh, promoted throughout the world and that is very very important now if you look at article 33 of the un convention against corruption then it basically talks about whistle blowing and i'll just read it for all of you each state party shall consider incorporating its domestic legal system appropriate measures to provide protection against any unjustified treatment for any person who reports in good faith and on reasonable grounds 
to the competent authorities any facts concerning offenses established in accordance with this convention, which is convention number 33. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that there is this great trend which is emerging of whistle blowing because people are taking responsibility. Secondly, they are being protected through different laws, frameworks and mechanisms. Fourthly, what we see is that because of the whistle that they are blowing, there is greater accountability and regulatory uh, compliance being enforced by different institutions uh, to ensure uh, that organizations do not collapse because of corruption. And then there is also this cross accountability taking place whereby the corrupt elements at least have this fear that if they are doing something, then maybe someone might be uh, blowing the whistle and uh, would take them down. So, all of these factors are basically ensuring uh, a more uh, integrity oriented, more accountable, more anti-corruption uh, focused uh, culture and, and frameworks and environment. And like I mentioned, uh, the different initiatives which are now taking place on a global level, even in, in a country like Pakistan, are those UNODC initiatives uh, which are now going uh, up to the school level in which the academia, the corporate sector, the social sector and the public sector are all networked together uh, to work out uh, more comprehensive, sustainable ways uh, so that uh, people do not adopt corrupt practices. Thank you so much.